Okay, here's the thing. One day, we're all gonna be running AI locally at home. It's like, sure, we can use Google Docs in the cloud, but we also are gonna need Microsoft Word in our own laptop. And similar to that, I think we're gonna have state-of-the-art models running in the cloud and much smaller models running locally at home. And in order to do that, we're gonna need graphic cards. And here's the ultimate question. What is the cheapest amount I can spend on graphic cards so that I can run AI models locally? Welcome to Caleb Wright's code where every second counts. Technically, you don't even need a graphic card to run AI models. You can just run them directly on your laptop or your desktop using your good old CPU and RAM. For example, Llama 3 is a popular model that Meta released back in April, 2024. And most decent computers these days could run this locally without a dedicated graphic card. Okay, that's great, right? Here's the thing. Right now, most AI models that are decently usable are in the 30 billion parameters range. If you go lower than that, you'll probably be surprised how much of a difference there is in what you're used to seeing from ChatGPT and Gemini and what you're actually getting from these smaller models. So the question is, if I'm just using my regular laptop and desktop, what AI model can I run on my setup? Let's start by looking at the Llama 3 model from Meta, specifically the 8 billion parameter variant. The official release from Meta in their native precision is going to need slightly more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. And most decent computers these days will likely have around 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that means we can't really use this build to run the Llama 3 8 billion model, which is probably one of the smaller models that we have available for generic use cases. And you might be wondering, wait, but you just said we can use AI locally without buying graphic cards. Yes, typically what happens is within the first few days after open models are released, the AI community releases a quantized version of these models so that it can run inference much more efficiently. This means that even the Llama 3 8 billion, which needed more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, would reduce that down to five to six gigabytes if it's quantized to a much smaller four bit quantization model. And now you can technically run this model on average build at home. And I say technically because you'll be lucky if you get more than 10 tokens per second, meaning you're going to need to brew more than a cup of coffee while you wait for the model to respond. So yes, we can technically run AI models without a graphics card, but that would be a bit silly. In reality, we should use graphic cards. Okay, fine. CPUs are realistically not a viable option. So then what is the cheapest graphics card I can get away with? Here's the thing. Even graphic cards that are seven to 10 years old will likely do better than a decent CPU. And that's because most AI models thrive on tensor parallelism, which means doing small calculations concurrently in a batch rather than doing one thing really fast, which is what CPUs are great at. For example, even this old GPU called GTX 1080 Ti, which is already almost nine years old in technology, is going to be at least 10 times faster than a CPU. So even spending as low as $300 to buy one of these RTX 3060, which is already five years old in technology, your option is gonna start opening up in what AI models you can run on this thing. So let's see what this $300 can do for us today. Like we talked about earlier, Bigger models that are more mainstream like Kimi K2, Quen3, and GLM 4.6 are still way too big to run on the RTX 3060 graphic card. So trying to run these models on RTX 3060 is just not gonna happen. So your dating pool on what AI models you can run isn't going to be up here, but rather it's going to be somewhere down here. But I mean, you still got decent models here. You got Llama 3.1, 8 billion, perfect for general chat and some coding tasks, and you still got Gemma 2, 9 billion, or maybe other ones like Quen 2.5, 7 billion, and R1 Distal 7 billion. But I get it, you don't want B-list celebrities, but fear not, because under this pricing tier, we can spend a little bit more than the $300 that we just spent on RTX 3060, and now we have the famous RTX 3090, which is considered the holy grail in the AI community. It's got 24 gigabytes of VRAM and at the price point of around $800 average for used cards. And so even though you're spending $500 more in comparison to our earlier RTX 3060 card, this is more than worth it and here's why. Your dating pool now just opened up and now you're in a totally different tax bracket. Instead of running seven to 10 billion parameter models like we were with RTX 3060, now with the 3090, we can actually start to look at models that are in the 30 billion parameters models. And if you dare, potentially run a 70 billion parameter model like the Llama 3.1 70 billion that is heavily, heavily quantized. But generally, the bigger the size, the slower your token per second will be. 
So yeah, even though technically you could run the Llama 3.1 70 billion parameter model on a single 3090, you'd be lucky to get more than 10 tokens per second. So another good way to look at it is this. From 0 to 10 billion parameters, you can spend about $0 to $300 on graphic cards. And from 10 to 30 billion parameters, you can spend about $800 to run the models in this range. But here's one caveat. Keep in mind that the RTX 3090 is already five years old in technology and graphic cards that run 24 seven around the clock, like in crypto mining, typically have around five to eight years in lifespan. And most, if not all 3090s we can get today are going to be used. Okay, now we move on to the next pricing tier. And most people probably don't want to spend more than a thousand dollars, but the thousand to five thousand dollar price point is where you start to get AI models that are arguably comparable to some of the more mainstream models that we have today. Now, keep in mind, this pricing tier still doesn't allow us to run state of the art AI models like Kimi K2 and Quant 3 Max, which are one trillion parameters, and GLM 4.6, which is a much smaller 355 billion parameter model. What's crazier is that most state-of-the-art models from OpenAI, Gemini, and Grok are likely multi-trillion parameter models. And Grok 5 is rumored to be six trillion parameter model. Okay, so let's come back to Earth. Most people probably won't spend that much money on graphics cards in the first place. At this price point, we need to actually start considering whether it's cheaper to just rent out GPUs by the hour or just eat the cost and use your own CapEx to buy a GPU. For example, if you go to Neo clouds like Lambda, Coreweave, and Nebius, you can actually rent out data center grade graphics card by the hour. Here, you're seeing that eight NVIDIA B200 cards only cost about $4.99 per hour. So comparing this price point for renting and spending up to about $5,000 on a graphics card on a much lower grade GPU, the math needs to math. Kind of like using Uber versus buying out a car. If you're going to need a car for just a few weeks, maybe you shouldn't buy a car and just use Uber instead. But let's say you did all that math and decided, okay, I'm committed to spending what most people would spend on engagement rings, but on graphics card. First of all, how crazy does that sound? RTX 4090 is going to be a great option here and you can get them for about $2,000. And considering it's a three-year-old graphics card, it actually held up its value pretty well over time. The 4090 is about two to two and a half times more expensive, but it offers the same amount of VRAM. And you might be saying, wait, What's the point of getting the 4090 if I'm getting the same amount of VRAM out of it? VRAM is certainly the most important metric because the AI models that are billions of parameters first needs to fit before we even talk about anything else. So even though 4090 is $2,000 and 3090 is $800, 4090 is going to offer way more firepower than the 3090, but actually not as much as you think. When you look at most benchmarks that cover the difference between 3090 and 4090, the jump in performance might seem impressive. I mean, we're going from around 140 teflops to 330 teflops. That's gonna mean the price jump in performance has to be worth it, right? This is where a theory clashes with reality. Yes, in theory, we can get a much faster graphics card, but in practice, they're much more limited because of the kind of operations that we do in AI. Let's bring it back to the basics. When we use AI models, we know that these AI models generate what's called output tokens, which is what we eventually see on our screen. And in order for AI models to generate these tokens, it does an insane amount of math operation to make that happen. And this math operation is done in what's called matrix multiplication or MATMAL. So even though the 4090 can do more tensor operations than the 3090 by a factor of around two, in reality, it's actually not gonna look like that. And that's because the bottleneck isn't in the actual raw computation itself, but rather it's in the memory bandwidth. In other words, all the weights needs to be loaded from the memory to GPU compute units. And because we're limited by this bandwidth, the performance improvement is actually diminished. And for this exact reason, it's not uncommon for people to actually buy two or even three 3090s and get 48 gigabytes or even 72 gigabytes of VRAM because they would much rather find a date higher in the dating pool rather than settling for a decent AI models that can run faster using the 4090. Another card worth looking into is the newer RTX 5090, which is the next iteration of the 4090 that we just talked about. And the cost is going to be around $3,000 depending on where you source your GPU. And thankfully, the 5090 offers more VRAMs out of the box at 32 gigabytes of GDDR7. 
but the price point of $3,000 is still where most people buckle, given that you can get more VRAM by just buying two 3090s for less than $2,000. But there's still a give and take in either way you choose in how you want to structure your build. You might have wondered why I haven't talked about AMD cards. And let's be honest, Nvidia cards are way overpriced. And it's understandable at least because they're also kind of the best cards. But I wouldn't necessarily sleep on AMD just yet. AMD cards like RX 9070 XT, for example, which offers 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory at a price point of $600. Or even the RX 7900 XTX, which has 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, sells for under $1,000. But the biggest challenge with AMD cards is when it comes down to what you likely heard lots and lots about, which is CUDA versus Rockem. And this honestly should be a separate video on its own. But again, I wouldn't sleep on AMD just yet. Because once you get past the challenge of configuring your software to run AI models on AMD cards, they run just as well as any other Nvidia cards. But you likely need a lot more expertise to get it configured properly. And if you're down to get nerdy in tweaking things, AMD is actually an extremely affordable way to run bigger models at a much lower price. And once we get past the $5,000 price point, that's when we get into the commercial and data center grade graphics card. And like I said earlier, I'm working on a video on data centers and neo clouds that will cover this topic. And while the use cases for locally running AI models might not really justify spending thousands and thousands of dollars just yet, I do think in the future, we'll want more privacy and more customized models that we run at home. And getting into that early is a great way to get started.